Welcome back to the Dali Talks podcast. Um, I have a different type of conversation today. I have my eldest here and we're going to have a very candid conversation. So we're going to be talking about some of the challenges that teens are facing and she's going to give us her opinion on the differences of geographical location when it comes to race and culture and quality of education. So um, I hope that you like this episode and here we go. My eldest child, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Nadia. I'm a junior, a uh, class of 24. I'm in four AP classes, which is half of my classes. And yeah. So let's start with something light. Uh, what is your favorite thing about being a junior right now? Um, that I'm not a freshman. <laughs> I really, it's just freshmen get all the hate. So I'm just glad. I'm, Cause like, even about sophomores, you could be like, well, the sophomores are just acting like that. Cause now they're finally not freshmen, but I've been not a freshman for two years now. So that's mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, was it really that bad though, when you were a freshman? What do you mean? No, it wasn't that. It wasn't. It's not like an actual bad thing. It's just like a funny, like, oh, they get all the hate stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, being, well, for me, being a freshman was bad because we just moved and everything. Mm-hmm. But I feel like normally it's not really that bad. Mm-hmm. Actually, let's talk about that a little bit. Just like you had to move from the West Coast to the East Coast um in the middle of your well it wasn't the middle was it oh yeah it was the middle of ninth grade Mm -hmm. yeah pandemic was going on uh lots of schools were still doing remote learning so how do you think now looking back that you adopted to the change during the move um I I don't know. That's a big question. I feel like I, I feel like I didn't, and that's why I had such a hard time with it. I feel like I still am learning to, because mm-hmm. when you don't choose to find a way to adapt and you just let things work itself out for you, whatever that made it work out can also go away too. So once you're left without that again, if say something were to happen. Like you're left just lost all over again. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like what happened. Like if, cause I think like the main thing that helps you get through it is like friends. And if you just like, don't go looking for friends and they come to you and you like, it's those types of friendships that you like forget how you became friends, stuff just happened. And then like you lose those friends, you're like left all lost again and since you you didn't really adapt the first time you don't know what to do this time Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah I know that for me looking at what you and your sister were going through it looked pretty at first it looked like everything was cool and then dad and I started noticing a decline in like your behavior like you were more secluded not as chirpy not so willing to join us for dinners and just be with us like before. So I'm really, really sorry that you went through all of that. Um, And I can't imagine actually experiencing that because I think if I would have been in that situation back in the nineties when I was coming up, you know, and there was no internet, Oh my gosh, I would have gone nuts because our way of enjoyment was literally socializing and um, you know, we're creatures of just like wanting to be with people. And I have seen how different you become you and your sister when you're around your friends. It's so, it's so cool because it's like that little light in you just shines brighter and brighter because it's exciting. So um, I just want you to know that though it was really rough, I'm very proud of you because you you're here and I know that you might feel like you're not doing well, 
but I think that you're doing way better than you think. And um, so let's let's kind of switch the topic to high school, right? So you're a junior, and there's a lot of stuff that you have noticed here in this school district that we're not going to name compared to the one in California. So can you can you give us an idea of some of the main differences that you have noticed? It's um, well with the district itself and not the community. The, um, both. Oh, mm-hmm. well, I feel like it's very two different things because the district itself, I mean, there's nothing like wrong with it. It's just that like it was still a decrease because there's like the district here meets basic needs like basic like bare minimum whatever you know it educates you and it you know keeps you as safe as you can be in today's world and everything but in rancho it was like more Mm -hmm. because like the avid was better the programs were better even the sports were better honestly Mm -hmm. um the only thing thing different with the districts I hear is like it's just small stuff like the dress code here there's barely a dress code and there's nothing wrong with it like you know it's one of the things where like you take away the dress code you notice that nothing really changes it's not distracting anybody and just stuff with like um I think the only big difference is like events there are way way less events here and if there are, nobody cares because they don't they don't make it look good enough. It, and it isn't as fun either mm-hmm. as in Rancho. Um, like even the homecoming kind of sucked. Mm-hmm. Like that's why we literally left in the middle of it. But yeah, other than that, it's there's nothing like I just wish they had more like steam. Or stuff like that. I guess what they have here is PLTW. Mm-hmm. I don't really, I don't really know what that is, but it's definitely not Steam. I wish they, because Steam is like a lot more creative. It works with the code and it works with the, with the like math and science and stuff. But you also get to be creative. Like you have to build stuff. You have to come up with ideas. Um, with PLTW, it's like do this and build this and outline it for you, and you're all of your things come out looking the same because it's one it's one prompt so you mean coding they do more coding than hands-on building tangible things no not coding like here it's just what i'm saying is that like in show they allow you to use more of your imagination and stuff Hmm. and creativity and here it's like one set prompts for like if you're doing circuits or binary or whatever it's like one prompt and it's very like all of whatever your answer is or whatever you're creating is comes out looking the same because Mm -hmm. it's like one set answer okay with rancho there's not one set answer it's like you just have to meet expectations and that's the answer but your answers can come out looking different and you can use however much creativity you want and Mm -hmm. and i feel like it's what makes like rancho makes like thinkers like ideologists like and aberdeen just makes like accountants so what about the social aspect like what i mean by that is the behavior and you know the acceptance or maybe diversity here versus there i i hate it here I hate the community here. I hate that di- there's no diversity here. Well, okay, let me stop because actually there is. It's not all just white people. It's just white and black people, hmm. and that's nothing wrong with either of those races. It's just nothing not really. Wrong, but it's there's barely any diversity because that's just that's just that's two just races. Two races, yeah. And here, this is the most white people I've ever seen in one place. Like one good example is like. At La Salle and Vista and Rancho, they all had Flocorico. Mm-hmm. But, like, they don't have that here. And obviously, yeah. you know, it makes sense why. But also it makes sense why they do have it in Rancho. Right. And lunch, too, was different, too, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. even lunch, like, people would be playing, like, all that all that music and stuff. 
on the speakers at lunch and rancho and here it's just like bland Mm -hmm. and it's everything like that and you realize the way that people act is different because like manners or the manners that people get taught are different Mm -hmm. or rather lacked in one Mm -hmm. category of people than another I'm not gonna say Mm -hmm. but you know yeah yeah, it's just like stuff like that and you realize what the heck Mm -hmm. like it's crazy Mm -hmm. what about teachers here versus there is there a difference yeah there is like here I mean here all the teachers are white all of them. Hold on. I can think of a black teacher. Let me try. <laughs> Mr. Harris, but he's not your teacher, but I've, Mr. Harris. I've heard of him. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Smith, he's the security guy. Okay, he's not a teacher. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, that's okay. really sad well, though. Yeah. That's really sad. Cause... And it's like there's no yeah, it's all white teachers. And it's like in England, it's like different because uh, in California, like in the in the super olden day books, whatever, where they have the N word in it, they won't say it because obviously they're not the color. So they're mm-hmm. not going to say it. Mm-hmm. But here the white teachers will be like, well, we need to say it for literature. Like we need to say it. So they say it. Oh, wow. And they say the N word. Wow. No matter how like white as paper they are. Well, and- you also told me about that that student that just says the n-word left and right and she's gotten beat up over and she continues to do it yeah that's because they find out and sometimes like people care and sometimes they don't it's really like random here Mm -hmm. like you know how you know how like randomly white people want to be like blm but then other times they just like ignore it because it's like a trend it becomes like Mm -hmm. a trend it's not supposed to be a trend it's an actual problem Mm -hmm. so it's like when they decide to care yeah they'll get on you but like if they don't nobody really cares most of the time and it's just like also like if you're doing it excessively then they'll like care the students will care and say something Mm -hmm. but like if you don't then but you still do it and it's still public like people will still hear like people just don't care but yeah not only that about the teachers but like um like oh my gosh my spanish teacher Mm. when i was taking spanish like you remember yeah i I will never forget that so many things like one i could like the words i know in spanish already i couldn't tell what she was saying because her accent was so bad and also like some of the words also, it's because they like they in schools nationwide when they teach Spanish, the majority, I think all of the time, actually, it's Castellano. Yeah. But it's like in California, they'll be like, you know, we're not supposed to teach you this, but this is the word that it really is. Mm-hmm. So they won't have you looking dumb. Yeah. Because they actually speak Spanish. But here they themselves don't even know what the real word is, or I shouldn't say real word. I should say more common right. word is. Mm-hmm. So, like, you'll just go around saying that and looking dumb, and it's like, Mm -hmm. they'll say to you, like, oh, good, good pronunciation if you say something where you can actually recognize what the word is Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, oh, wow. We were talking about behavior, you know, of students here versus there. Have I, I feel like there's a lot more inappropriate behavior student to student here than in California. What do you mean? Uh, sexual harassment, specifically. And um, only only because the first few weeks that you came home, you and your sister both shared some stories that I was very surprised that was going on. And they kind of never stopped. I mean, now you don't tell well, me yeah, as much because it's become kind of like so normal. That's another, like, that's another thing I mean, like, I mean, sexual harassment happens everywhere in every mm-hmm. school, but it's like, it's not like this over there in it's Cal- a California. Lot more it's a lot more here. And I think it's because students don't care to, I mean, students' parents don't care because of, you know, the culture and stuff. Don't teach them that stuff as much. Like you and dad taught Jess and I that stuff about like how to stay away from that and Mm -hmm. and all that and also how not to do that Mm -hmm. you know like moral stuff but like people's parents here don't they Mm -hmm. don't care and honestly they're part of the problem they if anything they give into the problem and like not encourage it but like you know the ideas that go around that lead to that Mm -hmm. 
And yeah, it's a lot more here. Just like, I feel like the drug problem here is crazier too. Yeah, so. Like, because like every, everywhere in all schools, all kids do like mm-hmm, plain yeah. weed, everybody. Yeah. The experiment. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's the main drug, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's the most basic one. But here, like I was telling you the other day, mm-hmm. like people, people were telling me or, or talking about it with me in class that like there are literally kids here doing cocaine. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know one person and I haven't heard of one person in middle school or high school in doing cocaine. Mm-hmm. Like that's insane to think about. Like also like there's one kid that's like not a, I don't want to say a legend because that sounds like a positive connotation, mm-hmm. but like a everybody knows He's about notorious. him. Notorious, mm-hmm. yeah, notorious. That's 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 the right word. Infamous, notorious, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, because he was seventeen, or I think he's like eighteen or nineteen now, but he was like seventeen and he, doing heroin, and he dropped out of school because he had to go to rehab, and he's been to rehab twice now, apparently. Oh, he's the same. He's the same kid I told you about. The like, he's having a kid with his. Um, oh yeah, and the yeah. Girl said yeah. yeah, yeah. That's really sad. And it's like it's in that is insane. Yeah, that is actually insane. Yeah, that, that's really sad because that's just a sign of like deeper issues that that kid's having. Um. Wow. So, despite all of those challenges and those negative things that you see here, more than at the other school, what? type of support do you feel is being provided to students overall that is working that's working Mm -hmm. none none whatsoever no mental health no academic achievement type of like encouragement or you know none that's working i mean there's a lot but there's a lot there's not much that's Mm -hmm. working like I can I can compare this again but like yeah none that's working because like I think actually financial like aside from the social problems like stuff like just if you're trying to like look into getting like scholarships with school and stuff I think one thing that works actually is that um they send out like emails to the students like new community service opportunity or new um scholarship opportunity and some kids hop onto that so that's good Mm -hmm. but I think that the majority of those students are the SMA students Mm -hmm. but still even some of the regular the regular Mm classes students hop onto the scholarship and stuff so I think that's working if you're talking about Mm -hmm. the financial part Mm -hmm. that's good to know and um so since I feel like your generation is super active uh, when it comes to speaking up about certain social issues. I'm curious, what is it that prevents students from speaking up about the things that are not working at their schools? I think it's two things. I And this is just what I think, because obviously I can't speak for everything, everybody else. Mm-hmm. So please do not use me as like the spokespersons for right. my entire generation. Right. But um, I think, I think it's two things. And one, it's that you don't think anything is going to change or, or that anything can help, you know, with any of that. And two, I think it's also because students don't want help. Like not in a like... How do I explain this? With like internal stuff, they don't want like counselors or like teachers or like parents because it feels like they're bombarding them about it. It feels like. Like the students are bombarding the adults? No, the other way around. Like, oh, like they get too much. Like sometimes, like I feel like they, grown ups and adults and stuff, always feel like they can help with the solution and as much as like they're like I need to help them with this we need to find a way to help them with this but I feel like it's so hard for that generation or those parents whatever to accept the fact that there are some things you just cannot help them with and you shouldn't help them with 
And sometimes you need to leave like whatever prom there is, you need to leave a clean slate with them and give none of your personal influence so they can figure it out for themselves. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that just need to be that way. And as much as it sucks, because I know it's so many parents have told me this and I've heard it online on clips so many times, like all parents want to do is take away their kids' pain. And as lovely as that is, and as much as that's nice and I think that's sweet and everything and da 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 sometimes there aren't things that no matter how much you love them and no matter how much you want to take away their pain and how much you you want to help them and no matter how much you want to even like ask them like what can I do to help you they don't know and the reason why they don't know most likely is because there isn't a way you can help them and there isn't a way you should help them how you're going to help them is by not helping them, mm-hmm. you know, but it's hard. I I do have to like admit it's hard for parents to realize and sometimes even kids to realize in which case is one of those times. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, like. So when to step in, right. Or when to allow somebody to step in and help. Yeah. Cause if you're having like a moral um discovery with yourself or something maybe that's one of the things that you need to be left alone with that you need to do yourself but at the same time how how does a kid or yeah a kid determine like oh well I didn't need help with this blah 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 and then they start like I don't know becoming a a victim of something Mm -hmm. of like something some sexual abuse or something that like you can't that kid can't also be thinking like, oh, well, maybe this is also another one of those things I need to get through with by myself because it's not. So I think what what parents need to do to avoid that is specify the cases that 100% of the time is always going to be a, you need to come to me for that thing, you know, mm-hmm. which I would say is like violent abuses, sexual, any, any sort of abuse, any sort of abuse, um, like if you know, like the drastic basic things and stuff like mm-hmm. everything of hurting yourself or another person, da, 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 like all of that, you know, I think those are the times that you should 100% of the time come to a parent or an adult. And I know that even kids don't like it, like with the like hurting yourself thing, mm-hmm. obviously you're not going to want to go to anybody else, but you should. And that's the fact, but like other stuff outside of that, Mm -hmm. then you can determine like, is this something I need to, the lighter problems, right? The like, is this something I need to come to them for or not come to Mm -hmm. them for? Or is this something I I can do by myself? Or is Mm -hmm. it something I can't? And as the parent, that's hard too. Cause like, I know there are parents out there that are like helicopter parents and like, they are basically living through them trying to solve their life. Like it's, you know, because not every person is the same. Because I remember when I realized that, like, wow, I'm literally like a clone of my mom, except I'm a half a clone of my mom and <laughs> half a clone of my dad. So that makes me neither of them mm-hmm. because I'm my own mixed thing. Mm-hmm. And which means only half the things you're going to be able to get. And like, I'm going to have my own problems that aren't just yours and they're not just dad's or maybe the things both of you went through, you know, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, you know, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very wise 16 year old so um wow thank you for sharing all of that I mean it's hard for a parent to admit that yes we cannot help our children with everything and especially that our children don't want us to help them because it's brutal to watch your child be in so much agony and for them to just reject your help um, but that's, re- that's, that's what happens. And it's not just with this, this generation, it's happened with, I think, every single generation. So what are you looking forward to in 2023, as far as schooling, your work, you know, just whatever else you have going on? Finishing with a 3.0 GPA. Or 3.5 or higher. Mm-hmm. It bare, bare, bare minimum is 3.0. Mm-hmm. I mean, you usually but, go way beyond. Yeah, but like not in the past three years. 
Yeah. I mean, it's been rough. Yeah, it's been rough. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was talking about, I was talking about that with one of my guy friends today. Um, He, I was talking to like, we were both saying like, oh yeah, the pandemic was hard and everything. Da, 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 da. And we were talking about like our, cause it started with all of us like climbing each other for our grades. Da, da, da. But then just him and I were talking with like, yeah, but it like makes sense. Cause like after the pandemic, a lot of people went through a lot of personal stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was talking about, you know, what happened mm-hmm. with me mm-hmm. the beginning of last year or like last year, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I keep on wanting to say this year. I feel like it's still 2022, mm-hmm. whatever. It makes sense why a lot of this stuff is like this but we're tr- we're all trying to get back on track basically is what we're saying like we were talking about like we were going through stuff and as we were going through it we we're like I'm concerned for like I know I should be getting my stuff together and now is finally the time where you can feel like we're finally able to get stuff together like because it's not like we never didn't know our priorities y- mm-hmm. you know I feel like I feel like that's what a lot of parents think too. They're like, you don't you don't know your priorities. You don't have your priorities straight. Like we know our priorities is just whether we choose to is just whether we choose to like pay attention to it or not, or it's whether we have the energy or the like mental capacity to fulfill our priorities. So you start from from the bottom, the easiest to the hardest, and you got to work your way mm-hmm. back up. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually like. Um, looking forward to like applying to the schools and getting everything back in track Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm glad I'm proud to say that I've never been like this is my year I don't think I've ever said that um but I feel like I don't know if this is going to be my year but this is going to be the year that I feel like I'm gonna get everything back on track I feel like for three years I've been trying to get everything back on track but I feel like this is the year I'm finally going to and now I have a job and everything too, so I can save mm-hmm. and I can also like live a little bit more too. I'm also looking forward to the beginning of senior year because that's also what this year is. Mm-hmm. And hopefully it will be as fun as everybody says. And I'm also looking forward to summer because of California. This has been very insightful and I appreciate your time. And I'm glad that you have things to look forward to. I know that. You definitely love working. And I just want to let you know that daddy and I are amazed at your work ethic. It is very admirable. Um, But just don't get, don't go too extreme. Don't become a workaholic. That (laughs) that did happen to me at one point. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of my work ethic because Mm -hmm. a lot of the like guys at my school are like, that have a job or have had a job longer than me, like, oh, you don't know about that grind, da da da, da. Uh, But then once I started, like, working, and I started working, like, them 14-hour shifts, mm-hmm. remember? Mm-hmm. Which are literally illegal, I found out now, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I remember um, I was telling you, I was like, wait, isn't that illegal? Isn't that against state law? Money, <laughs> up, But, like, if, any, if anything's the grind, I mean, that's not legal, but oh, one thing God. that is is the grind. So, like... <laughs> And then they were like, no, you're just crazy. It's like, it's because you're not actually about the grind. <laughs> it's because you're doing it all for your ego. Or mm-hmm. saying it all for your ego, rather. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, baby. I love you. And I love you, too. I love the person that you have become. And despite your uh, obstacles that you've been hard on yourself about, um, You know, I know that you've learned so much and you've grown because of them. And that's a good thing about, you know, having certain obstacles in life. You, you evolve and you should be very proud of yourself. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you. I love you too. Wow. Well, I really enjoyed that conversation with my baby. Of course, I'm biased, (laughs) but I hope that you took a lot away from that conversation And I invite you to have a similar conversation with your kids. Just listen, just let them do most of the talking. And then if you want to address something later on, then wait like maybe a day and say, hey, you know, you mentioned this when we were having that conversation. I kind of want to address that and go from there. So I hope that you enjoy this conversation and that you take me up on that challenge. And I guess until next time, right? All right. Have a wonderful day.
Thanks for listening. Hey, did you like that episode? If you did, be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you may be listening and write a review. If you want more tips or some behind the scenes videos, make sure to follow my mom at Dolly Talks on Instagram. You can turn on notifications for her posts and stories as well. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. See you next time.